Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna show you three things you may not have known about the A10 Mini Pro. Here we go, check it out. All right, so number one, uh, it's pretty simple, but it's this. I've been asked this question before, can you use an iPhone as a video source? And the answer is yes. Now I got asked a follow-up question, um, can I use audio from the iPhone through that video source um, on my streams as well? And one, um, one person um, in particular said that they're trying to actually scroll through Instagram or social media and they want the video as well as the audio from that social media app going through their stream. And so at first I didn't know the answer. I knew we could use it as video, but I do wanna show you guys here today is number one is that you can use your iPhone or your iPad as a video and an audio source in a Tim Mini Pro. All right, so up on this screen here, this is the, um, the multi-view from the A10 Mini. So this is up here on my uh, monitor here, and you can see we have camera one, right? This is the Sony ZV-E10 right in front of me. We got camera two. This is my iPad over here, and so you can see as I'm scrolling, right? And so all you gotta do to connect that is you get an HDMI coming out from our uh, A10 Mini Pro, which would be output two for me right now. Um, and it's going over to my iPad, and then I just have an adapter that is a USB-C to HDMI adapter, all right? And just as simple as that. And so then you plug that in there, it will ask you, do you wanna trust this device? Or it might not even ask you that at all, but if it does, you hit trust, um, and then it will start mirroring everything. And so here's an instance, right? Um, so we're on uh, YouTube here. All right, and so we're gonna go over, here's our page. Meraki creators, right? And so then say we, uh, we're we gonna hit this video. All right, so now what you're gonna see here up there on camera two is the iPad. That's a YouTube video that's actually playing. And if you don't believe me, let's go pick out somebody else. You're like, oh, well, yeah, of course you have your video there. Marquise Brownlee, right? Many of you know him, you love him. Um, and let's get this video, here we go, on quitting YouTube. I was watching this one the other day. But here you go, now you can see, all right? And so that is not my video, um, but I have the video there, all right? And so then if we wanted to go live, right, right the, up there, program, now our audience is seeing that video. Now the problem with that right now is that they wouldn't be hearing any audio. And so then what we have to do, we just go to our ATEM Mini Pro right here, right? We have all these buttons here. This is coming through the iPad through HDMI 2, right? And then we have these buttons here. This is for our audio, right? Right now it is set to off. All we have to do is switch it on. There you go, and you can hear it. See? All right. And so you can hear it. And so we do know that it works, right? So you can use an iPad as a video and an audio source. And so some use cases, you're like, well, why would I need that, right? Well, say you're giving a presentation, right? And you have some kind of um, clip that you want to quote, but you don't want to quote it. You want them to get it. Maybe it's a clip from a movie. Maybe it's a product review and you have a video of someone using your product and you're trying to reveal that, right? So this is something where you could actually have it loaded up on your iPad or maybe on your iPhone and you plug that right in as an HDMI source, as a video source, right? And then you can actually play that audio. So you don't need two different things, right? You don't need a separate audio and a separate uh, video mix, it's all right there. So that's pretty sweet. Now what I also love about this, right? So the A10 Mini Pro gives us some options. Um, I wish there was some more buttons here. I know you can get the extreme and it has a little more options, versatility. Um, but right here on the surface, um, we have these up and down arrows. This is also for our audio. So if you check out the screen up here, right in the bottom right hand corner, there's camera two, which would be our iPad. Um, and then if we hit down, you can notice See, it's going down. Now it's at negative 10 dB, right, decibels, and now negative 13, and so on, right? And so then if, if our audio is a little hot or it's a little, um, little low, we can actually adjust that on the fly right here from the A10 Mini Pro itself. So that's also pretty nice. And now just to show you guys, all right, I got my iPhone. This is the iPhone 12. My iPad is in iPad Air with the M1 chip, but iPhone 12 here, and we're gonna do the same thing. And so we're just gonna test it out. Let's see 
how this works, all right? So we do need a different adapter for our iPhone, at least my iPhone anyways, right? So we have our HDMI to a lightning uh, cable. So we're gonna plug that HDMI in there. All right, so we got our, our phone set up, all right? And so now you can see, look over at this screen, I'll pull it up for you, right? Camera two, again, right there, it's on program mode. You can see some of the apps there, swiping through it. All right, and that is um, that is mirroring whatever is on here. Now let's just say um, we want to go to Instagram, like one of the people uh, commented in the comments, can you do Instagram, all right? Let's just check it out. All right, so let's just say, for instance, we got this guy going on here, right? And so this is Squat University. I like fitness and all these things, but you can see it up there on the screen. Now let's see if we can get the audio. This patient's life could not have come close to those 120 pound bags. There it is. There's your answer. But so now, just so you know, that's number one, right? What you may not have known, you can use an iPad or an iPhone as a video and an audio source. Now, um, Instagram, obviously, it's going to be in that vertical form. Um, so if you're you're mirroring your phone, it's going to look like that there, but you can do it. And so that's pretty cool. And then the audio comes through as well. You can adjust it on the fly, however you might need. So um, pretty neat stuff there. All right, so number two, what you may not have known about the A10 Mini Pro is that it actually, uh, Blackmagic has released a software. This has been out for some time now, um, and so if you've been around for a while, you know this, but it's a Blackmagic A10 software control is what it's called. Now I'm gonna launch it on my screen here, but what you can see, all right, from my screen is that you have essentially the same layout as we have here at the A10 Mini Pro, um, but we have some digital buttons here um, that we're gonna push rather than actual physical buttons here on the A10 Mini Pro. But now what this software allows us to do, it actually allows us to do um, a lot more that we can't do on the physical A10 Mini Pro itself. Now one of the pluses about the A10 Mini Pro is that you don't have to have a computer, you don't need to run this software, and you can still stream multiple cameras. Um, but if you were looking for some other um, If you are looking for some other options, this is one way to get it where you're gonna get a lot of options. And so inside of the software control, just to go over a little bit real quick, right? We have our basic, here's our program, right? And this is gonna switch in real time right up here on our screen. And so this actually, um, if we were live right now, this would be mirroring, right? Camera one, camera two, camera three, all right? And then we can also go to our preview um, if we wanted to preview, we want to switch cameras within the preview up there. And of course, my ATEM's upside down right now. Um, that's all right. All right, right here's our live stream. And so say you wanted to go to YouTube, you can choose your platform of choice that they have here, um, a custom URL there as well. Um, but say we're going to go to YouTube, right? And you're going to go ahead and you're going to put your stream key in here. You're going to select a few different options, right? Use switcher standard, quality, high, medium, low, hyperdeck, high, medium, low. All right, and you get to choose those things. And now once you actually have uh, done those things and you go over... Right, you can go here, you save or save as, right? Make sure it saves to the switcher, saves your settings. But then now when you go um, somewhere else, say you don't have your computer with you, but you just hook it up via ethernet or another way I'll show you here in a minute. Um, now, once you hit go live or on air, it's going to go um, to that stream key. So if that's YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, whatever it is. All right, so that's pretty cool um, if you didn't know that one yet. So you don't have to have your computer, but you do need to use it to at least set it up so that that function works properly. All right, and then you can throw different stuff into the record box there. There's the name of our church, right? It gives us a file name. Um, and then each camera, if we're recording it there, that way we can actually identify when we're in post-edit. Um, what files are what and which camera is what. You can do um, capturing stills, right? Take a picture while you're live streaming. Um, then you have your time code generator, all right? And then we also have our media, hyperdeck, um, color palettes. And so 
That's some stuff that we'll get into on another day, but what I really wanna show you is the audio. Now, this is super sweet. So on the ATEM itself, all we can do is we can turn up or down um, any camera input, right? We don't have a master volume switch, right? We don't have any way to EQ it, but now inside of ATEM software control, you can actually do all of those things. And so we have a gain up here, right? A little gain knob. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, it's digital and all that, but then this, check this out, equalizer. We can actually EQ each camera, each audio input that's coming in. And so say you have music, right? Or you have something a little more complex, we can actually go and adjust it. All right, we're gonna take some lows out of it, or at least the back end. I right, wanna add a little bit of highs up here on the front end. We can do those things. We have all kinds of stuff down below, right? We have, um, where'd it go? We have all kinds of stuff down below, right? <clears throat> Frequency, low, mid-low, mid-high, high, right? <clears throat> We have another gain knob here, all right? And so this is just some of the stuff and you can dial it in, right? And these all correspond to these little points on the graph here. I mean, you can really fine tune it and dial it in however you need to for your streaming needs or your recording needs. So that's super nice. And you can do that for each individual channel, camera one, two, three, four, each mic input as well, as well as the master um, track altogether. So if you had all six inputs going at one time, all of them, all of them unmuted, say it was a, a band of some sort, you can actually use the master EQ and you can uh, EQ it that way. So super nice. All right, next thing on here though, we have dynamics, right? So you wanna add some more, you're like, hey, EQ's nice, but I'd like to, you know, I'd like to work on the threshold, throw a noise gate in there. Hey, good news, you can, check it out, right? We got threshold, range, ratio, attack, hold, release, right? We got a noise gate that we could throw on there. We got expander, we got compression that we can add in. We got a limiter that we can add in on there as well. All right, and so just some of the things I wanna show you that you can access and you can kind of start to fine tune these and now if the stream is the same all the time and you fine tune these while the software's open, you save it, um, it will be saved into your switcher so when you go live off site somewhere and you have the same setup, same people talking, same music running, um, it's going to keep these EQs and dynamic settings there inside of the switcher, but you do have to have a computer and the software there to do it. And then the last thing I wanna show you here on the audio side is that we have a master track, which is super nice, right? And so you can see up there on our screen, right? There's no way to actually get to the program mode from our ATEM switcher, right? Um, looking it over just to make sure i uh, i mean i've been using this for a little bit now um, but i'm like hey maybe it's there but no it's not there right and so anyways so there's no way to actually access the master volume track and so say everything's dialed in pretty nice but maybe you don't know um, but your master track man it's boosted up here all the way to to 10 decibels right and then you're wondering why is there this hissing noise or why are things cutting out and it's just choppy all that well it's because our master tracks boosted up through the roof everything else is nice but if we come into our atem software and then we actually lower that back down to a reasonable level all right then all of a sudden things are going to sound nice and crispy the way that we would want them nice and clear all right, and so just keep that in mind because there's a lot of things that go into audio. You can't just plug it in, turn it on, um, and expect it to sound good, right? You are actually mixing each input, but then you also want to mix the output and the gains and all that stuff as well, making sure that you have an overall good product. All right, now number three. All right, this is a big one that um, you may not know, and you might not even need this ever, but so say you're taking your ATEM out, right and you are um you know someone you're doing an event you're doing the video um the you're the av guy for the event but say this event's in a park right a park doesn't have wi-fi they don't have an ethernet connection or any of that stuff now what you can do with this all right if you don't already know is that you can actually take your iphone and you can use your iphone as your internet source so you can tether your atem to your iphone i'm going to show you how to do it real quick 
All right, and so right now it's set up to my computer, right? Here's the USB-C going to my computer, allowing me to use the ATEM software. Once I unplug this, that will no longer be there, right? See, no switcher connected, which is totally fine um, and, and expected. And then all what we need here is we need a USB-C, USB-C to a lightning um, port there. And so that's gonna be the iPhone side, right? I have an iPhone 12 again, just keep that in mind, right? This is not the newest one. Um, so I'm sure the newer ones can have, they probably have more capabilities and it's gonna be better. Um, and you would just use a USB-C to USB-C. But so now all I do here, I plug in my USB-C side of this cord into the USB-C port down below. You should be able to see that there. All right. And then what we're going to do is show you. All right. We got our iPhone. We're going to plug it in. And it's going to, for one, you can notice that your phone starts charging um, automatically. It does a little buzz there, which is nice. So your phone's not going to go dead while you're live streaming. So just rest assured. You're like, well, what if it dies? I'm only on half battery it will actually charge it for you and then what you do and so it, it didn't ask me this time but the first time you plug it in it's going to ask you it's going to say trust <clears throat> trust this computer and you're going to click trust and then it's going to allow you to tether and it's going to do it automatically you can see the little green box up there it's linked on there and so now um, if i have my stream key set up uh, which i don't right now and i can't set it up now because i unplugged it from uh USB-C to show you this. But so if I have my stream key set up, so say it's to YouTube, right? I'm out in a park, I'm doing an event. Maybe it's a live music band. Maybe it's just a presentation. Uh, maybe it's just, I don't know, maybe it's at a school with the Wi-Fi is down. You need a backup plan. You can plug your phone in here, you tether it to it, then you hit on air. Uh, as simple as that. Now all of a sudden your phone is the uh, ethernet internet source uh, for your ATEM switcher. All right, which is pretty sweet. So you always have a backup plan, right? Because whenever you're doing a live event, especially if it's off-site somewhere, you don't know what the the internet situation is, you want to have a backup plan. And so you can just use your phone. I'm sure you can probably use Android as well. I don't have an Android or Samsung or Google phone or any of that stuff, but I'm sure you could use it as well um, just, just as easily. Now, one thing to note with this, all right, this is important because maybe you've tried this and you're like, it doesn't work, Nick. You're lying to me. All right, one thing to note is you have to have the right cable, right? And you're like, what do you mean right cable? It plugs into my phone, it plugs into my ATEM. You have to have the right cable. The cable has to actually not only transfer power, right, to charge our phone, but it has to actually transfer data, right? And so that's important, right? So I tried this with another cable that I have, um, and I was shooting this video um, last night, and I was trying it with that one, and for whatever reason, it wasn't working, right? It'd pop up for half a second and say, trust this computer. I'd try to click it, then it would close out. It wouldn't allow me to do anything. And so you want to make sure you get the right cable. So if it's not working for you, try switching out your cable. So thanks for watching, guys. If you got value from this, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. We'll be putting out more content like this. If you have questions about any of these things that I've talked about today, make sure you drop them in the comments there. And if you want to check out any of the gear that I've mentioned here, the A10 Mini Pro cameras we use, the setup that we use, just check out the links in the description there. But we'll see you next time. Peace.